kind of get us thinking about uh, what our options are and what this might look like for us. All right. So uh, let me, I'll turn it over to you, Matt. We'll see if I can get this, if I can get this working. Uh, actually, you know what, Bruce? I'll do it. Fine. Okay. Thank you. There you go, Matt. Great. And are you all seeing my screen now? Yes. Great. Yeah, I really appreciate um, being invited, and and you know we're excited to partner with with groups like ESIP and others who are interested in, in you know taking a little more active role in, in the scholarly communications um, infrastructure and 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 process. And we're also excited to partner with groups because we feel, and then, you know, certainly the dialogue that's going on more generally, um, you know, definitely makes us um, uh, certainly the case today is that every discipline and every group out there is, is sort of looking at preprints in a slightly different way. And that's that's great as part of the, the flexibility and part of the uh, sort of experimentation that um, can certainly happen uh, from group to group. Certain disciplines have been using preprints for a long time. For others, it's completely new. Um, some it's going to be a, a much uh, more of a process of education and promotion of the idea. Um, so we're, we're happy to play whatever role makes sense. The main um, part that we have been playing and, and we hope to continue to play is, is really on the technical side. Um, so that other groups that want to leverage certain infrastructure don't have to become infrastructure experts. They don't have to spend capital and, and fundraising time uh, building and, 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 and um, funding infrastructure. They can spend their time on the promotion and education and um, um, you know the, the, the parts where you're interacting directly with, with folks within your discipline. Um, so I'm going to start with just a kind of a, the real big picture, of the 30,000 foot view of sort of like why we're doing this and, and how we're doing it, um, what we're thinking about it. And then I'll, I'll jump in and, sh and show uh, the preprints interface live for those that haven't explored it and certainly keep it flexible, you know, open to any questions at any time. Um, so I think most people on the call are familiar with the OSF, so I'm not going to dive into to that. Um, but really just as a starting point for saying, as we've built out the OSF over the last three and a half, four years, um, more and more views into this research life cycle uh, become the natural um, sort of extension and focus point for, for new infrastructure. So we've done some simple things like OSF meetings where you can, you know, have a project and then have part of that be, be contributing to an OSF meetings uh, page where other submissions are occurring. We've done OSF institutions where People with single sign-on can affiliate um, their projects with their institution, and then those get aggregated into a single landing page. And, and when it came to preprints, and this was largely spurred on by some recent um, um, shifting in the, the landscape with certain preprint services that had been maybe a little bit more community controlled were, were, were bought by publishers, there seemed to be a need for um, uh, reevaluating what open source infrastructure there might be to serve this need. Um, because it wasn't clear with publishers getting involved how open those, those platforms were going to remain. And so we realized we really had all the components needed. We had file upload and file rendering and, uh, you know, security and authentication services. Um, what we really needed was just an aggregation uh, platform and then a, a dedicated submission platform. Um, so we were actually able to leverage the share tool, um, which, again, I think some of you are familiar with, and I'll cover that in a little bit more detail if needed. Um, the share tool, which is uh, built in collaboration with ARL, where the tech partners on it was already aggregating most of the preprint servers out there. Um, so we just needed to segment that and filter that view into a, to a landing page. And then we built the, the preprint submission page, which took our team you know, about a month or so to, to work up and go through a couple of iterations of it. And that created the OSF preprints page. Um, and this is an example of, of an actual preprint um, on the OSF preprints page. And you can see it links back to, in the bottom right-hand corner of that, that red box, links back to a full OSF project. So really, this is just a view of a file on that project with additional metadata that serves the preprint uh, purposes. So it's got places for a DOI. We actually are about to roll out uh, preprint DOI minting, um, abstract, tags, uh, taxonomies, um, et cetera. Um, download count, view counts, uh, version control, all those kinds of things. Um, and then very soon after that, we were able to um, iterate onto um, uh, branded services and partnered with Social Archive, Sci Archive, and Engineer Archive to roll out the first three branded services. Um, those three uh, groups were, were partnering with us from the very beginning to define some of their uh, needs and use cases. 
Um, and I'll, I'll show a little bit more about the other groups that we're working with. But some of the things that we're, we're really wanting to make sure other groups know about when they think about doing preprints, um, we feel very strongly that the um, integration piece is um, really key so that um, you're not creating another silo of information. Uh, you're not creating another place where someone has to go look in addition to um, other places. We're aggregating preprints from across most of the preprint servers that are out there and any ones that we can. There are a few uh, like SSRN that their terms and conditions actually prevent us from doing so. And we're trying to work through some of those. But, um, it, you know, that's really up to them. Uh, Share is built to do this kind of work and aggregate the metadata um, across these services. So right now on, on the OSF preprints, you can actually search 2 million preprints from across all of these uh, providers, only part of which we're hosting. Many of these were not. So by archive, archive, peer J, those kinds of groups. Um, yeah, it's brandable, so any group can can launch and, and manage a, a fully functional service for their community. Um, I'll cover a little bit more detail about what that means, uh, what that management means. Um, but as you can see here, we can you know upload a, a logo, a custom color scheme, and as of this week, we're also rolling out um, customizable taxonomy. So you'll be able to, to um, leverage any uh, taxonomy that's that's uh, important for your discipline and your community, rather than using the um, the sort of uh, gener generic uh, taxonomy that is on OSF preprints will map to that so that it's still discoverable across all the platforms and all the services. So we're working with a number of groups. Um, the six above the line have been launched. Um, the six below the line are in process. I think we'll see a few of those get launched in the next week or so. Um, some of these are some smaller research groups. Some of them are much larger community-driven um, efforts like uh, the LISA group for, for Library Information Science Scholarship. Um, and Paleo Archive. Um, and then the other really important thing that we really want to emphasize is, is that everything we're doing, um, just like the OSF, is, is free and open source. Uh, the code's on GitHub. Um, we as an organization are a nonprofit. We, we, it's in our bylaws that we cannot be you know, bought or sold um, or invested in by, by VCs. We, we are um, run by mostly family foundation grants and, and government grants, and then that continues to be our, our strategy. Um, and we have a strategic plan available online for anyone who wants to go read up on kind of what our next uh, three-year uh, goals are. So just for preprints, and I'll, I'll get back to what um, managing a, a branded preprint means um, and, and actually look at it in detail, but I just wanted to make sure everyone knew that we also had some other resources available. We have uh, a public roadmap document available there. Um, it's actually, uh, you can link to it. Um, it's linked right on the main OSF preprints page, and I'll show that in a second. And that's where we're tracking various groups that have come forward and said, you know, this, this, these features are important to us. Um, and we've looked at the feature set that exists already at Archive and BioArchive, and, and so we're tracking those those feature sets. So we're going to be improving some analytics, improve search and filtering, DOIs. I already mentioned we're going to be moving commenting from OSF, if you know that from the project space, over to to preprint, so that there can be post um, uh, post preprint uh, posting commenting, and then also rolling out. Um, a phased approach for moderation um, and then custom taxonomies, uh, as I mentioned as well. We're also, um, we've put together a, a steering committee or an advisory committee uh, with representatives from a number of the, the um, external preprint groups. So BioArchive, Archive, um, MLA, ARL, they're all represented on that. Um, and again, that's, that's listed on our site. Um, and then we also have the group of preprint services that have already come forward who are helping us think about use cases and um, you know looking at ways to experiment in, in scholarly communications. So um, our effort really is about deduplicating the effort that other groups have to take on. So no need for redundant development. Um, if you follow what Archive is doing today, um, they're looking at building their next generation um, service and, and they're estimating it's about $3 million. So um, not that every group would have to raise and, and spend $3 million, but it, it would probably be in the millions of dollars to build the, these services. And, and um, you know, that's, that's uh, true for what we've done with the OSF over the last few years as well. Um, there's a really great um, reduced cost for uh, sharing the infrastructure that's already built. Um, it reduces our costs um, as we uh, share, or it doesn't reduce our costs, but it, it, it expands our reach without having to duplicate um, costs that we already have. So the, the infrastructure is being reused, it's built in a modular way, and by sharing it, um, every group gets benefit. So if, if one group comes along and, and wants to work with us and partner with us on building some new features, those become available for all groups. We do not segment those features for one particular uh, community over another. And you get the advantage of our, our expertise as, as a technical development uh, group, um, and you can focus on the areas of expertise that you all have, which is communications and education promotion within your community. 
Um, and hopefully this lowers the barrier to entry for a lot of other groups that want um, more streamlined communication tools. Um, and that's, that's really our ultimate goal and part of our mission, which is to improve the transparency of, of, of academic research. Um, so I'm going to jump out of this real quickly and go over to um, preprints. You guys still seeing my screen? Just want to double check. Yep. Uh, yeah, it still looks great. Thanks. Great. Okay. Um, so this is the OSF preprints. Hopefully you've all had a chance to look at this. Um, you know, this is the this is the open re preprint repository on the OSF. So if you if there's not a discipline group that's out there for you, you can certainly load anything you want here on OSF preprints. Um, for this and for all of our branded services, we do monitor for spam and, and have a pretty robust system for doing that. Um, so you don't have to worry about, um, you know, movie advertisements showing up as a preprint. We, we take care of all that on the backside. Um, this is the, the generic taxonomy, like I said, and, and all the groups um, coming forward now can, can customize taxonomies within these and we'll still map to it so that if I go to do a search here, uh, preprints on a uh, one of the command, community run services will, will be discoverable. Um, real quickly, that link to uh, that requirements roadmap is here, um, just below uh, the list of other preprint services. And then this is the advisory group that we're um, working with and meeting with about a, once a month just to check in on, on direction and features. Um, and I would also encourage any of you who are familiar with the ASAP bio uh, proposal process. It's been put on hold, um, but we put out a, um, a preprint of our uh, uh, response to that proposal, which has a very detailed development um, proposal for the ASAP bio um, commons uh, service and if there's a lot more detail there if you want to dive in on that level um, it, it's a pretty exhaustive um, uh, proposal on our part for building out uh, additional preprint infrastructure so this is the the, the generic one and I'm going to go ahead and um, click on to um, let's see here let me go over to social archive and to show you what in a branded site looks like so they've they've picked out the colors um, they um, have reduced the taxonomy to just these four um, they may or may not be rolling out a, uh, a community, or sorry, a custom taxonomy in the near future. Um, but this basically will allow me to search for um, preprints that have been uploaded to just Social Archive, uh, which there's been about a thousand uploaded in the last uh, five or six months that it's been been opened up. They have formed their own steering committee of uh, members within the soci uh, sociological research community, um, and they um, basically take on the effort to promote and educate their folks in their discipline about the, the preprint service. And they actually have a really good um, external site to this uh, called sociopen.org, where you can see they have things like FAQs, they run a blog, um, and that's generally where they're doing a lot of their communications. They link to this repository of preprints from that site, but we're not hosting that kind of additional sort of organizational information. Just like I imagine ESIP would probably have a, you know, a dedicated website for information about a preprint repository if that's what you decided to do, and that would link to um, the URL for, for the repository here. As of today, or right now, all preprints, all, all preprint services on the OSF are what we call completely open, meaning there is no moderation for reviewing um, the, the, the preprints before they get posted. Um, and that's a, a temporary status, but it's actually been working out very well. There hasn't been any, any problems with any um, uh, incorrect or, or non-scholarship information being posted, which is nice. Um, again, we monitor for spam. Um, we do have the ability to take stuff down after the fact if there's something that is, is called to our attention, but that hasn't been needed as of yet. What we'll be doing in the near future is, is offering moderation services. So the steering committee for each group, in this case, uh, these folks here for Social Archive, um, they'll decide for themselves what is the right editorial process and policy to have for their preprint service. Um, we envision offering services for uh, both pre and uh, post uh, posting of the preprints moderation. So you could either have a queue of preprints that have been submitted that you would have to um, allocate responsibility for reviewing those and and approving those those preprints for um, posting on the site. Or you could go a little bit more lightweight and say everything gets posted, but uh, we reserve the right to take stuff down that we feel is not appropriate um, for for the preprint service itself. So that'll probably be phase one, the sort of simple acceptance and rejection criteria, um, either before or after it gets posted. Uh, we do plan on offering more robust services for um, additional peer review. Uh, so some groups may decide that they want more robust reviewing, uh, where someone actually looks at it, reads through it, double checks everything's um, appropriate, citations are appropriate, 
maybe it's from a, a recognized scholar at a, at a recognized institution, um, and that could be divvied up and, and actually assigned to members of your community on, on, the, um, on the back end. So we would basically, we're building out a uh, admin side of these preprint services for the communities that want it. And um, we'll be working through several phases of that work over the next um, you know, three to six months. So um, I don't know if you've all had a chance to look at the adding a preprint. I'm happy to walk through that. I'm also happy to walk through an example page, but I'm just going to pause there and, and sort of see if on the big picture what running a service means, um, see if there's any questions there, and, and, and we'll, we'll jump back in if needed. Okay, great. <clears throat> Thank you, Matt. Um, I see Bruce, you, did you want to jump in? I saw you had a question in the chat. Oh, I was just wondering about uh, licensing contents and, and user agreement. Uh, I haven't looked at your user agreement on the site, but do you have one that, that is uh, in effect that is sort of the generic user agreement for all of the different services? Yeah, so our terms of use here linked at the bottom of every single page um, is the uh, universal terms of use for all OSF services. Um, it's it's pretty uh, much what you expect, which is, you know, you have to have, um, you, you can't post copyrighted material, um, you know, you own, uh, you, you retain the ownership of, of the material that you post, we simply are displaying it. Um, so it, it's fairly straightforward, but, but please do look at that. If you have any questions about it, um, you can send that back to us um, on our, our side of things. Um, for every preprint that is uploaded, the, um, the author can, um, uh, apply a license. I'm not sure if they've actually added a license to this one. Um, actually, it looks like they haven't. Let me go to uh, Social Archive and see if they their example one has. Let's see here. Actually, it doesn't look like they have a license on that one either. So I'll do uh, find a, find a better example here where they have a license. But yeah, every submission of a preprint, you can choose from a license, and every community can choose which licenses to offer. Uh, we offer CC BY, CC ZERO, um, no license is an option, and that is something that you can set as part of the, the variables for offering um, the service to, to your community, what licenses are available. Thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone else? Any other questions for Matt at this point? Either I'm getting one. really good at my talk or, or people are shy. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there a link um, or, or a document you could share with the, the kind of de details the current taxonomy that you're using? So we might be able to dig into how that might map to some of the taxonomies um, we're exploring. Yeah, definitely. So um, actually, there is a um, so if you go to the preprints page on the COS site, this tells you about preprints. But actually, the bottom half of this page is about setting up a preprint. Um, so let me see if we've added the link here, and if not, I'll go add it right now. There is a form here which basically walks you through all the things that you need to decide when you want to put up a preprint service. So we walk you through all the branding elements, um, any of like the URL redirecting elements, all those kinds of things. And if I remember correctly, um, on the second half of this, we do um, have a, a technical document for the taxonomy. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. We have a we have a basically a Google sheet of the current taxonomy, and you can basically um, select subject areas from that taxonomy. And it's it's uh, three la three layers deep right now. I um, mean, it's the it's actually the B Press taxonomy. Um, we looked at a couple. We we first used PLOS's by uh, preprint or sorry their taxonomy, and it was woefully insufficient. So we moved to B Press. And that was better, but still insufficient for a lot of um, very specific communities. Um, so we're sticking with that for now, um, but again, offering the ability to do customizable taxonomy. So you can then add additional subject areas and additional um, nested subject areas. You just need to tell us which subject area within the global taxonomy from BPRESS it should be nested, and then we'll, we'll build that out for you. Hi, Tom, this is uh, Matt Marinick from NCAR. Um, I have a question. Uh, Matt, this is really interesting and I appreciate this uh, overview. Um, so uh, you, you mentioned there's quite a few groups that are either doing this or, or getting started. Um, and some of them, you know, like the Social Archive, Social Sciences is quite broad in mm -hmm. terms of its domain focus and so on. And so I, I guess my question is, uh, do you have a good feel at this point for um, you know, sort of broad versus narrow in terms of subject focus, what's, what's sort of working better? Uh, and I'm sure it's quite a bit of variation, but 
you know, how is that sort of very broad, like this one versus maybe sort of more narrow sort of subject focus in terms of getting it off the ground? Do you feel like there's sort of an indicator yet as to which direction has been most successful? Yeah, great question. Um, right now, and, and to, to add a little bit more detail, right now you can only post a preprint to one service. Um, we are looking at a technical um, feature that would allow a, a preprint to be discoverable under both or two different services. Um, it would have to go through each individual editorial acceptance criteria separately, um, but eventually it would be um, a resolved URL to, to a single preprint. You might just discover it through, through two avenues. Um, so that is an option that we're looking at for down the road. For right now, um, in terms of the preprint services themselves, I would say yes, the broader, the more broad the subject, the more successful it's been. If you just look at in terms of how many preprints there are, um, like Social Archive is over a thousand, um, Engineer Archive is I think still around a hundred or two hundred, um, OSF preprints, the generic one is, is close, closing in on a thousand. Um, but for the more specific communities, like we're about to launch some for paleontology, sports science, um, contemplative sciences. These are probably areas where they, there is no other preprint service that's really serving that community. Um, or they don't fall into the, the larger bucket of, of social archive or archive or bio archive. Um, so it, it's, it's really what's going to matter, what's going to be most important for your community. Some communities are already using one of these other services like archive. Um, and it's certainly our intention is to not um, be competitive, but, but maybe to provide a little bit of, of, of innovation um, around these services. Um, so that eventually there may be actually multiple services, multiple preprints within these larger communities. Maybe there is a, um, you know, uh, like within psychology, maybe there's one on, on personality uh, that develops um, for just papers within within the personality uh, subject area. Um, and that would be fine. There would be some competition around the editorial process. So we're, we would be deciding about um, or, or perhaps the, the, the landscape would be um, researchers would evaluate based on what's the editorial criteria being used versus what's the, um, the prestige necessarily of the service. We wanna make the, the technology very, very even between them, um, but allow each group to, to decide for themselves what's the, what's the appropriate editorial criteria they wanna use for these types of papers. Some groups will also decide only preprints, um, but no working papers, no gray, gray literature. Um, some will be more, more open. Uh, most of these groups so far have been extremely open about preprints, postprints, gray literature, working papers, um, and, and anything in between. Yeah, thank you. It's it's very helpful. Um, Tom, do you have a, a sort of perspective at this point of what the scope is for for what you think what you're thinking is? Uh, no, that's still an open issue, and that actually was kind of the next agenda item. Um, so I think uh, yeah, I was hoping one of the things that I wanted to at least begin to, to touch on today to see what this group thought about and how broad or how narrow we wanted to go within their sciences. Yeah, <clears throat> well, one thing I can say about NCAR, so NCAR is National Center for Atmospheric Research, or some of you are familiar with it. Um, we, we have quite a wide range of uh, domains, even just within that, from sort of solar to ocean and, of course, atmosphere. And I think what we've seen is definitely some of the solar groups are using archive, um, the regular archive. And maybe some computer scientists are using that as well, um, but I don't know that we've seen other any any other groups using any preprint servers in any in any consistent fashion or in any high volume. Yeah, I mean the nice thing is if they are using archive or if they decide that um, uh, you know a much more global preprint service uh, maybe under the the leadership of ESIP and other groups is is, is I hopefully they'll all be discoverable. That's that's really part of our intent is to make sure that they're all discoverable. Um, you know, by minting DOIs and, and having an interface that, that can, can bring them to light. Um, if they're on external sites, and you can see here on the right side, I, I haven't done a search, but this is just a you know, generic uh, return of, of results. Um, these, this is returning the metadata about the entries at these other locations. If you click on them, it actually takes you to that site. Um, so if I click on you know, this one, it would take me to the Repex site um, for that preprint there. But um, the nice thing is if, if I don't restrict the source, I can come in here um, and, uh, you know, just add, add a, a criteria here. There's actually not a lot for hydrology. Actually, they've been, been tagged at archive, but you can see there is one at archive with hydrology as a subject area. But um, as far as this search shows, there's only one of them there. Anyone else? Uh, any other questions for Matt? Yeah, 
one way to think about this may be to start with the, the, the bigger um, area and see how it takes off and, and, and combine your efforts um, with promotion and education around this. And then there's always the option to um, create um, subdiscipline preprints later on down the road. I, I think that would probably be a, not a, a bad way to, um, to, to approach this, mainly because if, if all the groups represented on this call and perhaps other groups um, that you might network with, um, you can all collaborate on promotion and, and, and education um, at conferences and, and on, on calls, um, you know, uh, webinars and things like that. So that, that could be a really good way to do it. Um, you know, we, we don't have the ability to promote within your, your communities. That, that's, that's the role that the groups behind these, these services are taking on is, is doing that. And Social Archive has been doing a great job uh, of doing that. And, and several other groups are, are, are picking up. And we're, we have a, a common email list that everyone can share ideas. And they're, they're, they're sharing information about what promotion activities are working best. Um, some of them are getting funding to, to have uh, postdocs uh, working on the service. Uh, from a moderation or, or education approach. Um, so there, there's a lot of different shared information and, and um, ideas being floated around the groups, them, between the groups themselves. And if, uh, if I could ask one more question before we um, you know, switch topics. Yeah. Uh, I know the last time we had talked, Matt, you had mentioned um, some potential um, barriers or, or issues surrounding naming. Would, could you, would you mind just reiterating that again? Yeah, sure. Um, so as you can see, there's a, there's a bit of a theme here for the names. Um, you know, uh, as homage to Archive, um, who uh, has been around since the early '90s, um, they were. We were asking most of the groups that um, were starting to um, to seek permission from Archive uh, to use the name. Um, and in fact, if we go to um, Sci Archive, you can see here we have a, we do have a disclaimer down here that um, this is under trademark. It actually, their trademark is still under um, under application, so it actually hasn't been granted yet. BioArchive does have an app, uh, has a trademark for the name. Um, so archive uh, folks at Cornell have stopped giving that license freely right now um, to use the name. Our hope is that they'll they'll come back to doing that. Um, I think probably some of the legal folks got involved and, and decided the best course of action was to not do anything with their, their naming um, convention while they have their trademark under application. There are several of the groups that we're working with that have decided um, that their name is, is derivative enough or they're not worried about um, seeking uh, that permission right now. And they're using an RXIV or XIV derivative instead of a full ARXIV. Um, I'm not a, a, a trademark attorney myself, so I don't I don't have any specific advice on, on how to go about the naming convention. My, our position is if we were to ever receive a trademark violation notice, we would want to take down the site until that is resolved. Um, it wouldn't be that hard for us to switch the name and switch the logos around with a little bit of forewarning. Um, so right now we're in a, a little bit of a, of a gray area around what names can be used legally versus those that can't. We have several groups that are going with different names. Uh, as you saw on my slides, I'll just pop this back open. Um, a few groups are now using archive. Um, some of them are just using preprints. Um, you know, some of these folks are saying, well, we're not using ARXIV, so we're fine. Uh, that's really up to you to decide what is what is an appropriate name um, at this point for, for, for using for the service. Sorry, I can't be. A lot more uh, detail there, but that, that's that's pretty much where we're at. Well, that's good. To, good to know, though. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We're we're hopeful that no one's going to make a make an issue of it. Um, that this actually just enhances the brand for everybody um, by using a common naming convention. Um, but you know, when lawyers get involved, you never know what can happen. <laughs> All right, it's certainly true. Well, thank you. Thank you again for uh, for your presentation, Matt. I really uh, enjoyed it. It's very um, it, you know, helpful and very insightful to see you know, how all of this works behind the scenes and what the options are. Yeah, and just to give you a, a bit of sense of, of the effort, um, once you decide that this is something you want to do, um, you, you saw the, the form here. So once you um, you know kind of have your, your decision to go forward and, and you can work on some of the elements here, you know, logo, color scheme, um, we even have a little Chrome browser uh, plugin that you can use to play with the colors on a page, um, you know, basically drop out all of that information into this form. And, and of course, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to email me. Um, and then it's usually, we work in two weeks uh, sprint cycles. Um, so basically 
depending on exactly what day of the week we get your your information, we evaluate it, make sure it's all there, and then we we put it into the next cycle. So it's usually anywhere from two to four weeks for us to, you know, get get a new service turn turned on, depending on, um, you know, the work on the custom taxonomy and things like that, um, and if there's any back and forth on colors and logos. Um, but we're happy to work through that with you and and, and answer any questions along the way. Great, thank you. So yeah, we're gonna we'll continue discussing um, kind of what this would look like within you know, ESIP and, and our sciences, and then um, you know certainly hopefully be back in touch soon. Well, great. Well, then I'll it sounds like then I'll, I'll drop off the call and, and let you guys continue and um, 